In this video, we will create a database in phpMyAdmin. Then we will create a database table to store the user's information, such as their login information and other information. So, with phpMyAdmin open and the Home tab selected, let's go and choose Database. And right down here where it says Create Database, Let's call it d3.projects. Then click Create. And now over to the left, notice that we have a database called d3.projects. Now, let's create a table. Let's name this table Users. Now, let's click Go. Okay, so now we have to enter fields. Let's start out by name in our first one user underscore ID. It's going to be a type of integer. We're going to allow 10 characters. We'll make the this one a primary key. We'll make it auto increment. Click auto increment. The primary key uniquely identifies each record in the database table and it cannot be null. Any one of our tables can have only one primary key. By setting our primary key to auto increment, we will be automatically generating a new number each time we add a new record. And that number will always be one greater than the one before. So for example, when we create a record, the first record will have the number one. We create another record, it will have the number two. We do not have to enter those names or those numbers into the database. It will be automatic. Our next field is going to be called username. And we're going to set the type to a variable character. Leave the set the length to 50. That's 50 characters is going to be allowed. So then we need a email. Again a variable character. We'll set that to 100. Then a password. That will be a variable character also. Set the length to 100. Okay, so let's click Save. So now we have the table. This is the structure. These are our fields in the table. Notice the user ID has a key. That indicates that it is a primary key. And you can see that right here. You can also see that it is auto incremented. Now if we go and click the browse button, we see the same fields. Now they are columns. Now let's go back to the structure tab and down see where it says add. Let's go ahead and add. We could add more. We could add as many as we want. But for now, let's add one. Let's Go ahead and accept the default after password. Click go. Let's call this one active. And we'll set it to, this is a boolean. And it's default, let's set the default as defined to zero or false. Click save. Back to the structure. Now you see we have a new field. And because we set the default to zero, anytime a new user gets added to the database, they will automatically be inactive. We are creating this active field in order to manage our users later on. So in other words, as long as they're inactive, they will not be able to create records or use the database at all. But we can activate them just by clicking a button. We will use PHP for that functionality. You will see how that works very soon. Notice that I have the structure button selected. This is the structure. If I click the browse button, now our fields appear to be column headers. Below the column headers, we will create rows of the users in our database. And for that, we will be using an HTML form and PHP. But first, we have to connect to the database 
and we're going to do that in the next video. For now, I want to give you a brief introduction to PHP. If you already have a little bit of knowledge in PHP, then you probably want to skip the rest of this, but this is going to be just in case you don't. So we have a PHP document open. Right now, inside the body tag, there is nothing in there. We can put HTML in PHP. So right now, I'm going to add some HTML. I'm going to add an H1 tag, say intro. This is just plain HTML. So let's go take a look, and we see the intro. Okay, but we can also do this same thing with PHP. So I'm going to give me give myself some space. So I'm going to start a PHP tag. It's a lesson sign, it's question mark PHP, and then a question mark and a greater than sign. And inside the PHP tag, it's where the Again, we can put some HTML right here, but we can echo, we have to echo it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, intro. So let's take a look. Nothing changed. And we can also put our HTML tags inside of our echo statements. So let me show you. Take this H1 tag out and put it right here inside the quotation marks and it put its closing tag right there inside the quotation marks. So let's save it and nothing changes again. So you might be wondering, well, why are we going to use PHP if all we're doing is writing HTML anyways? Well, there are many reasons. For one, we can connect to the database and pull data out of a database with PHP, but we can also use logic, like if statements, conditional statements. So let me give you an example. Right here, I'm going to declare a variable. To declare a variable in PHP, we use the dollar sign followed by the name of the variable. A variable name must start with a letter or an underscore. It cannot be a number, and it can only contain alphanumeric characters and underscores. Variable names are case sensitive, so you got to remember that. So I'm going to declare a variable called the header and set it equal to 1. I need a semicolon at the, the end of this. So I'm going to say if header equals with a double equal sign, just like JavaScript, Let's say 2, if it equals 2, and inside curly braces, I'm going to take this whole echo line, put it inside the curly braces. So if it equals 2, we're going to output a header with a h1 tag. Else, we're going to, I'm going to take that again, I'm going to cut that out. I'm going to make that an h2 tag. Okay, so let's save that and see what happens. See, let's look at it. View source, we get an H2 tag. Okay, so if I change header, set it equal to 2, then we, let's see what happens. Go back to view source. See, now we get an H1 tag. You see how that works? This is just a general example of the power of PHP. We cannot do this kind of logic with plain HTML, but the real power is when we connect to the database. And in the next video, we will make a connection to the database. So I'll see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.